Thanks for joining me for this lesson on self-care tips to better care for yourself while you support your children with ADHD. Understanding compassion fatigue. What can end relationships, create conflict between teachers and parents, and emotionally exhaust even the strongest and most patient people? It's compassion fatigue. Compassion fatigue is the same as physical or emotional exhaustion, or both. It's what happens when you care so much and work so hard to help others who face challenges. Now, while compassion fatigue has been mostly studied in people suffering from the effects of traumatic stress exposure, many believe it can also affect parents raising children with special needs. In fact, it can be found in any relationship where there exists a feeling of compassion for the suffering of another person, ongoing exposure to their suffering, and a sense of responsibility for helping. You are at risk when caring for others gets in the way of caring for yourself. While signs and symptoms are known to vary from person to person, they include the following feeling a sense of hopelessness and that better days lie ahead. For example, you think to yourself, why bother? It's going to end up happening again anyway. Also questioning our abilities or even our worth. For example, you think to yourself, I'm such a bad mom. I can't do anything right. Third, losing patience and the ability to control our emotions. For example, after a hectic morning, after getting yourself and your kids to the car to go to school, they start the fight in the backseat and you just lose it and you scream at them and you cry out in frustration. Also, having difficulty sleeping, feeling tired and not quite ourselves. Perhaps you get up at 3 a.m. and you start scrolling through your Instagram or watching YouTube in the middle of the night and you feel restless or you're losing your spark and your sense of humor. So perhaps you just feel numb and you struggle to get through your day and you just can't wait to get to your bed just to sleep. What is self-care? Self-care is the mindful taking time to pay attention to you and not in a narcissistic way, but in a way that ensures that you are being cared for by you. Now self-care goes a long way in managing stress and in living your best life. Why is self-care important? Self-care is part of the answer on how we can all better cope with daily stressors. Research has found direct effects of self-care on self-awareness and well-being. Likewise, mindfulness has been found to positively affect well-being. The good news is that compassion fatigue is preventable and reversible. Some experts say it's simply remembering our ABCs, where A is for awareness, B is for balance, and C is for connection. Overcoming compassion fatigue begins with an awareness of its signs and symptoms. It includes those struggling tremendously to help a loved one with ADHD. Now that you know more about it, you can see the warning signs and take action. Self-care plans are critical. They should include activities that bring joy, hope, laughter, and gratitude. I realize that this is easier said than done. Our brains are more sensitive to negative information than positive, but there's good news. Experts tell us that intentional paying attention to the positive things in our life strengthen neural pathways to positive memories. And by forcing yourself to do this, it can eventually make it easier for you to focus on positive as opposed to negative experiences. Our greatest source of strength is each other. You need to restore or actively seek connection with others who you can trust and can turn to for inspiration and support. So now that you know your ABCs, you now can think about activities that restore a sense of calm and balance, zen if you will, for you to overcome and prevent compassion fatigue. Keep in mind that you focus on just a few activities at first, so they become a habit and part of your routine. Make a list. And as you think about those restorative activities, make a physical list and keep it on your phone 
or your computer or even your agenda. Ask others who you trust for their ideas and do some research online. There are tons of suggestions. As new ideas come to mind, add them to your list. And remember, your goal is to find things that make you feel good and doesn't feel like a chore or a burden. You should set a goal to incorporate self-care behaviors every day and add them to your daily routine so that you feel calmer and happier. As you brainstorm to create your list, think about incorporating these four areas, physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual. The first one we're going to discuss is your physical self-care. You know this. Taking care of your body's wellness helps reduce stress and makes you feel happier. These are some ideas to get you thinking, but be sure to choose activities that you enjoy and that you can incorporate into your self-care routine. A healthy sleep routine, have a healthy diet, take lunch breaks. Also, go for a walk at lunchtime. Take the dog for a walk after work. Plan taking time off of work regularly, even if it's just a staycation. Also, exercise before or after work. Schedule time for meals. Next, mental. Don't forget to include an activity or two for the health and well-being of your mind. Your brain needs stimulation to stay in shape, and there are many things that you can do to stay mentally active. Here are some ideas, again, to get you in the right direction. You can put a puzzle together or complete a crossword puzzle or Sudoku. Learn something new like cooking, drawing, music, art, or even a new language, and also play cards. Next, your emotional social wellness. If you feel that your current connections with family and or friends are not providing you with what you need when it comes to living with ADHD, organizations like CHAD can provide online communities and local chapters who provide their members with ongoing support and encouragement. So I encourage you to utilize those resources today. To take a break from thinking about all the ADHD stuff, think about a book or knitting or a foreign language club or recreational sports teams. Your last area of well-being is spiritual. For many people, being spiritual means observing rituals, studying text, and attending religious services. For others, it's about connecting to yourself, other people, and nature, arts, and kindness. Whatever you focus on, spirituality offers many benefits. And here are some ideas. Connect with the spiritual or religious community. Pray or meditate. Read a sacred text. Spend time in nature. Practice mindfulness. Practice meditation. Practice yoga. Explore chanting and mantras. Keep a gratitude journal. When you consider your self-care plan, you want to be organized in the same way we've talked about earlier. So ask yourself these questions. What tasks do I need to do to accomplish my goal? What resources do I need? What thoughts, feelings, or symptoms are holding me back? And then find ways to overcome the things that might get in the way of taking some time for your self-care. Create a routine, be sure to add it to your daily routine and keep it in a place where you will see it each day. You're likely to find that taking good care of yourself gives you a feeling of control and organization. Add a reminder in your calendar to check in with yourself and see how it's going. It can take up to a month for activities that you do each day to become habits. And then another reminder to check in with yourself within three months to reassess how you are doing and then make any adjustments to your plan so you can stick to your goals. Real versus fake. Real self-care is the mindful taking time to pay attention to you. So be careful not to fall into the fake self-care mindset where you, when you are feeling stressed or depressed. These are activities where you might feel guilty about them later. Examples include 
saying yes just to be nice or to avoid conflict, indulging or avoiding tough situations, and also impulse purchases. Don't punish yourself though if you happen to indulge in a new pair of shoes you didn't need, for example. <laughs> we all slip up now and again. Instead of beating yourself up or punishing yourself, make a plan to find ways to change your mindset and keep working towards making mindful choices that lead to positive, long-lasting change. During these moments, ask yourself, do I really need this? Or is this a need or a want? What has helped me with this before? Think about the healthy ways you have coped when you were feeling blue or stressed and you needed a little comfort and focus on doing one of those activities instead. All self-care starts with your belief that you are valuable. Many people with ADHD have trouble putting themselves first, thinking that they need to take care of others in their lives before focusing on themselves. That may be caused by a feeling that you're not deserving of self-care or that you think you don't have time, but you're likely to find that taking good care of yourself gives you a feeling of control. Remember that Chad is there for you to provide information, resources, and support.